So my topic today is about the train the trainer model or the train the trainer process. And I, I wanted to cover this topic for a couple of really big reasons. For instance, many of you may want to get into a career as a speaker. And just so you know, there are a lot of folks out there who will get you dreaming really big, tell you about all this you know, fantastic money you're gonna make, and then they're gonna ask you to pay them a bunch of money for their stuff. And then when you get it, it's you'll figure out very quickly that it's absolute crap. You know, it's stuff that nobody really wants and nobody's really nobody wants to buy it. Um, and we don't want you to kind of fall into that trap if you happen to be looking for a, a speaking career. Um, so by going through an, an explanation of the train the trainer process, you can know for a fact the value of the content that somebody is providing you before you actually pay them one cent. And so that's, that's one of the major values here in, in this particular episode. And then for an even larger part of the audience, though, many of you are most likely at, if you're not already at some point, you're going to start creating content for your company. And, and just, keep in mind that there's only one of you. So if you are creating content for your company and you're teaching that to people, then you know, you, you've only got so much time in the week. So you, 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 you get better value out of your content, at least eventually when you're, you're going to need to train other people to deliver that content. So there is real, and by the way, that is where real wealth comes from. In, in, in this industry as well, and really in every industry, is when you find secrets to success in your industry and you can train other people to implement those secrets, then now you leverage your knowledge and, and really you leverage your knowledge exponentially. That's where true wealth comes from. And so on this episode, I'm going to share with you how to do both of those things. Um, we're we're, we're going to show you how to test other people's train the trainer process. And if you have a train the trainer process at your own organization, you know, then you can use this criteria to, to test yours. We're also going to show you how to create a train the trainer program for yourself so that, so that you can leverage your time and leverage your skills as well. So let's first start by explaining what the heck the train the trainer model is. So let's start there. So the train the trainer model is a very common model in the business world. However, many of these train the trainer programs have huge flaws. Now, a good analogy of what happens during the process when you start to train other people to, to do your stuff is the old, the old telephone game. I remember doing that in like high school and college, you know, you put 10 people in a room, you whisper a phrase, let's say the phrase has more than 10 words. You whisper a sentence to the person sitting next to you. And then that person whispers what is supposed to be the same sentence to the next person. And then the next person, the next person. And by the time you get to the, the, the 10th person and that person tries to recant back what he or she heard, it's totally different. The whole message has been garbled up. And that's, that's what happens a lot of times with, if you, if you don't spend a lot of time creating really good train the trainer programs with um, with built in fail safes and with redundancies and things like that, then you can basically just have a very expensive version of the train the trainer game telephone game, sorry, the, the telephone game, <laughs> a really expensive version of the telephone game. And, uh, and it can come back to, to bite you. So by the way, this doesn't have to occur, you know, if you if you put the right steps and processes in place, then um, your employee development, you know, as you as you're bringing on employees uh, and within your department or within your organization, it, it becomes phenomenal. It can also cut your training costs dramatically as well. So um, let's talk about it. what what is this this model and how how is it supposed to work? So very simply, the train the trainer model is a process where what I call subject matter experts, you know, SMEs, some subject subject matter somebody who knows what the heck they're doing in, in your industry are, are trained now to develop other subject matter experts. So the acronym SME is, is used a lot of times in the, in the technical realm. However, you know, subject matter experts, they exist in every industry. So whatever it is that you know that other people outside of your industry or other people outside of your department don't know, that's, that is what you are a subject matter expert on. You're an expert on that topic. I, I'll give you a really simple example. Like for instance, when I was in high school, I got I, my first job was working at the mall. I looked at, at Chick Fil A, which is interesting because I'm hiring a lot of young people now, 
And one of the things that I've kind of noticed is that Chick-fil-A shows up on like every young person's um, resume <laughs> when they're first out of high school and college and that kind of thing. So, so if you're, if um, uh, maybe it's just the people that I'm, that I'm interviewing, but I tend to find that, um, that, th that seems to be a starting point for a, a lot of young people. And it certainly was for me, but I mean, my first day there, my first day making you know, chicken sandwiches, they didn't put me on the cash register. They put me in the back and I was, bre I didn't even get to see any customers that day. I was breading chicken and I was squeezing lemons for the lemonade. The owner, and by the way, the owner didn't train me to do this. The manager, the person who was managing that store didn't train me to, to bread the chicken and to do the lemon. It was a kid who was about my own age was training me. In fact, that kid had only been working at that particular restaurant, maybe that restaurant maybe five months longer than I I had, you know. So he had started just a few months before I did. However, he had been doing those particular jobs for for the first month that he was there. So he was the subject matter expert on breading chicken and squeezing lemons. Now, in contrast, when I studied to be a presentation coach, I went through a more intense train the trainer process. I, I spent three years studying with a, a certified trainer, somebody who not, not only was skilled at public speaking, but also skilled at teaching other people to teach public speaking. So that person was definitely a subject matter expert, expert and I studied with, with that person for like three years before I became a trainer myself. And, and by the way, during those three years, I, I, me and that subject matter expert, me and that, that trainer dissected every single module that, that he was teaching in the, um, in, in his presentation class. And then he and I also co-taught the modules with, I, I we, we co-taught it, we taught them together. I was, I was teaching them with my mentor. So, so, uh, finally a, a, a second instructor trainer flew in to certify me. So, so another person who was also an expert on training people actually came in to check up on the person who had been training me to see if I kind of knew what I was supposed to know, right? So basically, those are two different kind of extremes of, of, of train the trainer. Pro Both of them are train the trainer processes, but one has a lot more fail safes built into it. And, and we're going to be talking about the latter. We're going to, that's what we're really going to cover in, in these sessions is how to kind of create those fail safes. So let's talk about the keys. There, 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 there are some key steps that you need to, to know to create a great train the trainer course or train the trainer process. And, and Point one, the most important thing is that you have to start with by creating great content, you know, great content. It's the start of all great train the trainer courses. So one challenge with the train the trainer programs that I've seen anyway, is that the content is is in the head of the subject matter expert. Right. So this person is very skilled at what he or she does but it's not written down. <laughs> the information isn't written down anywhere. So like, um, like years ago, I, I, I had, um, I, I had so many clients at, at, at this point in my career that I had, I was, was sometimes double booking myself, you know, I'd have, um, meetings on the schedule where I was supposed to be in two different places, two different cities on the same day. And, um, so I hired an assistant to help me and by the way, my assistant had management experience, so so she was used to having procedures written down and in, in a in a in a very strategic step by step process. And since my processes were kind of at the time anyway all in my head, the lack of structure really really frustrated her. It made her it 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 made her um, it, it just made her job really really difficult. So one of the things that we did very early on when she started working with me was that she and I spent a couple of weeks just writing down and refining the processes that I use. They're kind of second nature to me, but since they had never been written down, it was more difficult for her to, to implement them. But just by writing them down, by, by, by doing that, we, we can actually the, measure the effectiveness now of each one of those steps. And then as a result, we adjusted the process over and over and over to increase both efficiency and effectiveness. And then within months, I was able to work with 
I, I would guess maybe about three times as many clients as what I was working with at the time before she started with me. So I tripled my productivity just by writing the process down and refining it. And so, uh, and by the way, eventually, as a result of doing that, I was able to bring on new team members. And since I'd already created the process, now I could easily train these new team members to do that process because it was all written down. It was all, it was all tested. It was all, it was, it was really refined. So, so basically the, the, the key thing to kind of keep in mind is that if you efficiently organize your content into a simple step-by-step -step process, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to create a train the trainer process. This is also one of those things that you can check other people on. So if, if a lot of the train the trainer process that you are going through or that you've experienced is it's a subject matter expert that's saying, Hey, here, just do what I do here. I'm going to say something. And then you say something like this, then, Oh man, that you, that's fraught with um, things going bad. So those are, those are some of the key things to kind of look for to make sure that, um, that uh, you're, you're either investing in a really good train the trainer process or that your train the trainer process is up to speed as well. So, okay. So once, once you write down the content, you, you want to make sure to really simplify the process. So um, just as an FYI, when, when we show people how to do this on our presentation seminars, we basically combine both of these steps that we, we, in the writing down process, we also simplify it all at the same time. So we make it all one thing. We don't, we don't make it complicated first and then make it simple. We make it simple from the beginning when we write it down. So um, the, in, in fact, the biggest mistake that a lot of new trainers make is trying to teach too much in a, in a single sitting. You know, um, nobody's going to remember a 100 step process. <laughs> so if you can get your process down to a few simple steps in the beginning, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. Um, um, so, and by the way, any, anybody can master a five step process. So if you can get your step by step process down to just a few simple steps, then now we can, we can master those five steps. Then once they master those five steps, we can add five more steps. And then once they master those five steps, we can add five more steps, right? So you can do this over and over again. So it's not like you have to dumb down your content. It's not like you have to cut content. It's just, you want to feed it to the people that are in your audience in, in bite-sized pieces. Don't give them too much in, in one sitting. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm currently training a new presentation coach. Um, have been for for quite a while now, but um, and because he's been a speaker for over a decade, he kind of went through my class expecting to to teach right away, right? So he he basically came through the fearless presentations class and said, "Oh, great, that's easy. Put me in, coach, right?" And uh, I and I and then you know, after him going through the class a couple of times, I let him see the instructor manual for the first time. That's where everything is kind of written down. And after he read, I don't know, maybe five or six pages, he was shocked at all of the different steps that every one of our instructors take in each one of those sessions to ensure that our class members increase their confidence. We have to make sure that this thing is foolproof. It's got to be, it's got to be a process that is so refined that no matter what happens in the class, people are going to be able to Re reduce their their public speaking fear. So we and and by the way, we make it look really easy to our class members, and we make it easy for the class member. But what our instructors are doing is very very complex. We're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make things easier for the people that are in that audience. And so um, I explained to him that he and I would be co teaching classes for the better part of a year before he got certified. And he, in each one of those classes, by the way, he, he'd start doing more of the process. So every time that he and I teach a class together, he's mastering a different component of the process. And then over time, he will have mastered the entire process. So I, I'm basically giving him the process in bite-sized pieces so that he can master every single component. And that is really one of the best ways to do a train the trainer. So when you design your train the trainer model course anyway, create a simple step-by-step -step process. And if the, if, the, if the process is really complex, then break it down into easy, learnable, bite-sized pieces, and you'll get a much better result. Okay, the next step is that you want to test 
and measure the process. So now that you've created this step-by-step -step process, you want to actually test it. That's what that's what my assistant and I were doing. You know, after I, after we kind of wrote it down, we refined that over time. We tested it and then we refined it. So um, if if the process, by the way, it, within your content is flawed in your course, your train the trainer course will also be flawed. <laughs> so the, the worst thing that you can do after you create a course is to roll it out without testing it first. Uh, and because that b b you can't back up from that. Once you roll that out, it's much more difficult to fix stuff. Um, I'll give you a fantastic example of this. Back in 1997, that's how old I am, right? So 1997, I was... Um, uh, in the in the speaking industry by that point, um, but and but I I was maybe you know um, uh, what I guess five or six years outside of college, and during that time frame though the Franklin Planner Company merged with Stephen Covey's leadership company. So Stephen Covey taught time management skills, and Franklin sold uh, day planners. So it seemed like a pretty sound merger. Uh, but it didn't work as they expected, though. It didn't kind of work out as well as what, what everybody thought. The new company created a train-the-trainer model to certify instructors on the content that Stephen Covey created, the, the seven habits of highly effective people and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the problem, though, was that they didn't really test and measure the results. Uh, and, and at the time, I was just starting to get into the speaking career. I, hadn't, I, had, I had gone through some training myself, and, uh, and I was starting to kind of learn how to teach. My wife had, um, I, she was my fiance at the time. We weren't actually married back then, but, but she um, was, she worked for a company. She was a manager at a company and the company did quarterly cubby training sessions. So this was a, uh, the, not, and, and by the way, she dreaded every one of them. So this was a company that had invested heavily in getting these certifications to become a Stephen Covey trainer, who knows how much money they were paying to Franklin Covey for this, for this honor. Um, but every time that she went to one of these quarterly sessions, she kind of, every time she just, she said the words Covey training and like her eyes rolled up in the back of her head. And I, I, I remember like I, while we were dating, I remember her saying, ah, oh, I'm going to another Covey training next week. These things are a complete waste of my time. And I always thought, that was funny since, you know, she was attending time management classes and she thought they were that the time management classes were anyway, it was beside the point anyway, but the, that company though, Franklin Covey made a huge mistake. They began to certify anybody who paid a small fee and attended a, a short train the trainer class. A lot of times these were like weekends, you'd come in on a Friday and you get certified on Sunday morning. The people leading the sessions by the way, weren't subject matter experts. These people were not. If Stephen Covey had taught that training session, probably would have got more value out of it. But because these were people that had purchased the rights to Covey training, they, they, they weren't really the subject matter experts themselves. And now they were, it's like the telephone game again, right? So since they never measured the results, by the way, of the train, the trainer model or that cl those classes that they were doing, they never knew it. They never realized that they were putting stuff out on the market that wasn't really uh, effective. And they just watched their stock, stock price just crash. Um, it, it just, it, for, for the next five or six years, their, their stock price just fell and fell and fell and fell and fell. I think it was at one point, it was down to less than a dollar a share or something like that before they finally recovered. They finally realized, but it took, it took the better part of a decade for them to recover on it, recover from that.